In my Who Are The Mets Untouchable Prospects video, which if you haven't seen, I encourage you to check it out. It's one of my best videos and it got a lot of support, so I really appreciate the support I've gotten on that video. But Joshua Rock commented that I should do a Mets hot takes. Example, Pete Alonso is 50 home runs again, Mets win 100 games, stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to give my hot takes and just overall general predictions. I don't know if they're necessarily hot takes. Some of them might be, but it's more so predictions for certain players on the Mets. The next requested video that will probably be next Saturday would be from a Steve Demato. I hope I'm saying your name right, but it was about prospects who didn't work out. Uh, Lastings Millage, friend uh, Nando Martinez, guys like that. That video will be next Saturday. So maybe we could turn that into a tradition, like every Saturday a video requested by a subscriber. You know, subscriber Saturday, we could make that a thing. So if there's a certain video you would like to see, make sure to leave that in the comment section below. And if you like this video talking about predictions and how I feel about the overall team, make sure to leave a like and comment. What are some of your predictions? What are your hot takes? Who do you think might have a bad year? I would love to hear your guys' opinions and feedback on what you think of mine and what would be some of yours. I would love to see those. And also, make sure to subscribe. We're working towards 900 subscribers. Getting pretty close, so I always appreciate when you guys press subscribe. Makes my day, makes the videos and all the editing worth it. I love talking to you guys in the comment section. So let's get into my predictions. And we'll start off with Pete Alonso because that was one of the people that he mentioned in the comment section. So for Alonso, I don't think he's going to hit 50 home runs again, but I do think he will hit at least over 40 home runs again. And the reason why I think that is because obviously he had the huge rookie year, but even last year, where all of us will say Alonso had a bad year. You know, he definitely struggled especially in the beginning of the season with runners on base. Alonzo was not himself, no doubt about it. But still, Alonzo finished the year with 16 home runs. If in 60 games you hit 16 home runs, you add another 60 games, now you're at 32. You still have 42 more games to hit 8 home runs, which I'm sure Alonzo could do. And that was in a stretch where Alonzo struggled. So imagine giving Alonzo 102 more games. He's bound to have a hot stretch or two in that span so he's gonna hit multiple home runs in multiple games just have like a great week where he's red hot so that would just easily put him over 40 home runs even in a bad year so I definitely could see that happening again we're gonna do offense first then we'll do pitching and then I'll do my overall prediction for the Mets record as their team currently is constructed because it is subject to change depending on some of the rumors going around right now today while on the topic of 40 home runs I think that another New York Mets that hit over 40 home runs will be Francisco Lindor Lindor hit 38 home runs in 20 18, and I just think that New York is going to be a great fit for if somehow fans could get in attendance. I just think that knowing us, knowing Met fans, the kind of support and passion we are going to express when Francisco Lindor steps that batter box is going to be overwhelming. That he is just going to feel so welcomed and loved and motivated because Francisco Lindor, if you watch him and his personality, he feeds off that. That's what Lindor is about. So that means that when Lindor feels all that support, he's going to be like, oh, I got this. Watch this. Boom. Home run. I just feel like that's how Lindor is going to play. I think he's going to be a really good fit for the Mets and he's going to do very well. He's not going to be this guy that comes to Mets and doesn't do well. I think Lindor's going to have a great year this year, so I imagine he's going to hit over 40 home runs. My next offense prediction is that Michael Conforto will have over a 300 average again. I was so encouraged when I saw Conforto have a 322 average in 2020, and yes, it was a short season, but it was more so the way Conforto got the average. It wasn't just, oh, it's a short season. It was that I literally saw Conforto change his approach. I mean, there were times where Conforto was going opposite field. He was just doing a half swing, which is something that I've always been complaining that Conforto does not do enough because this is a guy that has foul pole to foul pole kind of power use the opposite field more take the hit the home runs will come just hit the ball stop trying to swing for the fences and I really feel like Conforto did that in 2020 and it gave him to his best year of his career the fact that Conforto is in the last year of his deal and is going to be looking for a contract extension or maybe a new contract with another team depending on how Springer if he ends up coming here and how the Lindor extension works it could be a little tough to keep Conforto so I think that's going to be extra motivation for him to perform even better which is why I can see him easily having a 300 plus average. Another player I could see having his average above 300 once again is Dom Smith because Dom Smith in 2020 he had a 316 average if I'm not mistaken so I think he could do it again because in my Mets tier list video all you guys told me about how Dom Smith is an elite offensive player and I agree Dom Smith definitely has some good offense now this is assuming that Dom Smith gets to play you know if there is a DH Dom Smith is definitely going to play if there is not a DH there, it might not be that much play time for Dom Smith if the Mets get a center fielder whoever it is we'll see but if he does get to play, I do think that Dom could hit for above 300 average because he is a really good hitter. And he's showing us that as he gets older, he's getting better, you know, because he's still very young, only 25 years old. So Don Smith, he's not even in his prime yet. So I could ha see him having another 300 plus average year. This next guy, not only is he going to have a 300 plus average, but he's going to be top five in the league in batting average. And that is Jeff McNeil. 
McNeil is an amazing hitter. He's had a 300 average every single year ever since he's come to the major leagues. And I think that McNeil, he had definitely had a little bit of a rough year as well. Even in a bad year for McNeil, he still had a 311 average. And with a 60 game season, anytime, let's say you're having a good stretch, if you had a bad stretch, boom, your average skyrockets down. The averages fluctuate a lot because you don't have enough plate appearances. So I think that McNeil, he'll have a better year, you know, obviously with fans being back, hopefully. I think that he'll be a guy that can have a top five average in the league. And if you guys want more information about McNeil and his hitting, check out the description because there are two articles from Mets Junkies, one by Cornier and one from the Mets Junkies team, where they talked about how good of a hitter McNeil is. Cornier really took an analytical approach and looked at the analytic stats onto why McNeil is such a good hitter. And then the other article is just predictions from multiple people from Mets Junkies and just different Mets fans' perspectives on how they feel McNeil is going to play. So I definitely encourage you guys to check those articles out. Another player on the Mets that I believe will be in the top five in an offensive category will be Brandon Nemo and that with on-base percentage. In 2018, Nemo also had a 404 on-base percentage. So this is something that this guy can routinely do. And if you're above 400, there's a good chance you could be top five in the league. And I think that Nemo, he's like Dom Smith, still young. He's going to continue improving. Not in his prime yet. Be a top five in on-base percentage. Now let's get to pitching. This is where things get interesting. So my first one is Jacob deGrom, I believe will win his third Cy Young Award. In a 162 game season with everybody playing multiple teams, not just their divisions, I believe that Jacob deGrom would have won the Cy Young. Trevor Bauer was fortunate to face the National League Central and the American League Central where he had to deal with lineups that were nowhere close to what D Jacob deGrom had to deal with on a more consistent basis. Lamps like the Braves, like the Nationals, like the Phillies, even the Marlins, for some reason they always give deGrom a tough time. That was tougher than what Barrett had to deal with in the Central. And if you remember, with DeGrom's first Cy Young Award, Hunjin Ryu looked like the runaway candidate in the first half of the season. Then the second half rolled around, and Hunjin Ryu started to not pitch nearly as well, and that led to DeGrom being the Cy Young Award winner. And I think that that is what would be the difference in 2020, was that if there was a full season and Bow had some bad starts, DeGrom wouldn't. DeGrom would stay consistent because that's what he does, and that would have led to him winning the Cy Young. So in a full season, DeGrom is still amazing. I imagine he's going to win another Cy Young in 2021. The next New York Mets pitcher that, in my opinion, will have a very good year is going to be Marcus Stroman. I know that seems crazy to think, but you have to remember, most importantly, Marcus Stroman is on the last year of his deal. Knowing Marcus Stroman, he is going to want a big payday. And in order to do that, he needs to show that he is a good pitcher. And let's not act like Marcus Stroman has not had good years in the past. In 2017, Stroman had a 309 ERA. And in 2019, between the Mets and the Blue Jays, he had a 322 ERA. I mean, he had a bad year in 2018, but still, he is capable of having good season. I just think that with this motivation of, of potentially a contract, a long-term contract being in the back of his mind, I feel like that is going to motivate Stroman to actually pitch well. And then maybe once he gets the contract, he won't be as good as he was this year. But at least for this year alone, I do think that Sherman will have a good year. Another starting pitcher hot take, I think Steven Matz will have a bounce back year. At least he has to, just for the sake of Steven Matz himself. Being on the last year of his deal, I just think that when you look at Matz, in 2015, the kind of contract you would want to give him if he was a free agent compared to 2020, it'd be drastically different. And I think that for Matt, he wants to try his best to get that value again because Matt could have been a guy that could have got so much money if he was the same pitcher he was in 2015. And just the pitcher that he is capable of being. Like, we've seen Matt be good, and he had good moments in 2019, but then 2020, it was a bad year for him. Plenty of players had bad years. So I do want to see Steven Matz bounce back. I like him. He's a good guy. And for the Mets, it would help out a ton if they got a good Steven Matz as the number five starter. It would really take the Mets to the next level. So I imagine that Matz will have a bounce back year. My bold bullpen prediction is that Seth Lugo will establish himself as a top five reliever in the league. Seth Lugo is a guy that, to me, is lights out when you put him in the bullpen. He is much better as a reliever than he is as a starter. I know he had the 5-plus ERA, but that was mostly because of one bad start against the Philadelphia Phillies. Because, again, in a 60-game season, you don't have enough innings or plate appearances to really have an accurate number. The numbers fluctuate way too much because for the majority of the season, Lugo's ERA was really good. And in 2019, Lugo had that stretch of like a month where he didn't give up a run. I think you're going to see that a little more often and will lead to not only Lugo being a top five reliever, I think that Lugo is going to be so good that he is going to get more national attention by the rest of the media, not just the Mets, but when you go on MLB Network, when you look at other places, more people are going to be talking about how good Seth Lugo is because they will see that this guy could throw any pitch in any count, could go multiple innings, bring him with runners on base, he could strand them, get the big double play ball. Lugo does it all as far as a pitcher is concerned. So I think that as long as the Mets keep him in the bullpen, he will have a tremendous year. Now, as far as my overall team predictions, I believe that the New York Mets will have five All-Stars this season. I think those five will be Jacob deGrom, Francisco Lindor, 
Pete Alonso, Michael Conforto, and Jeff McNeil. Uh, obviously, DeGrom and Lindor are pretty much given to be All-Stars. And since I see Alonso having 40 home runs and with his popularity, I imagine he'll make the All-Star team. Like I said, I think Conforto's going to have a great year again, so he's probably going to be an All-Star. And then if McNeil is top five in bang average, which I believe he will be, he would be an All-Star as well. Because don't forget, McNeil was an All-Star in 2019, and Conforto was an All-Star in 2017. So it's not like I'm predicting any guys who haven't been an All-Star before to do it now. This is something that all these guys have done before and are still capable of doing. As far as the record is concerned, I have the Mets right now at at least... 95 wins. Now, if the Mets do decide to get Springer or they get uh, Brad Hand and some more players, another center fielder, more pitching, the Mets could get to 100 wins. But as they're currently constructed, I think this team could get at least 95 wins. At least they better get 95 wins because if they don't, it'll be pretty hard to make the playoffs because there's going to be competition in the National League. Obviously, the Braves are still going to be very good. I imagine the Phillies got something up their sleeve. I don't think the Nationals are done. We know the problems in the West with the Dodgers and the Padres. And, you know, the Mets, they don't necessarily dominate the Central. They don't necessarily dominate the teams they should beat. We'll see if that's changed now with, you know, new owner, new general manager, new assistant general manager with the analytic approach of Zach Scott. The Mets are going to have a lot of new players. We know they're not done. We know they're going to make more signings, whether it's one big one or multiple nice signings. There still is more work to be done on this team. So that is subject to change. But those are my predictions. I would love to hear yours. And until the next one, be safe, be smart, be healthy, and let's go Mets.